guys, welcome to Better Bachelor. My name is Joker with a face for radio and a voice for print. Uh, today I want to do a little bit of a book review. I just finished uh, Aaron Clary's The Menu, Life Without the Opposite Sex. Um, it takes me a long time to get through stuff. It's only a four or five hour audio uh, book, not very long. Uh, and I don't have time to read much anymore. So I listen to it as I take the dog for a walk and things like that. And I actually listened to it a couple times through uh, because I wanted to be able to absorb it. Um, and, and, and listening to it one time through, oftentimes when I'm walking the dog or other things, I don't quite catch everything. But I wanted to talk about it a little bit um, because I think it's actually another one of Aaron Clary's good books. As you guys know, I, I've, I've purchased uh, every one of his books that he has. I enjoy all of them. And I, I say in many times that I think Aaron Clary is the writer I wish I could be. That if I, if I could compress all, I don't know, 800 videos that I've done at this point down into book form, these would be the books that I write. However, I write like a four-year-old. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have any skills uh, for, for uh, writing. So Aaron Cleary's books kind of are what I recommend uh, if you want the same information in print form or in audio form or things like that. So I, I wanted to talk about his book for a minute today and just give you guys the heads up because, I, again, I think this is another great addition uh, to the library of Aaron Cleary books. And you guys also know that I don't, I, I don't really, I don't take sponsors and I don't promote things unless I agree with them. Uh, and maybe that'll change uh, with YouTube cutting back on my income uh, and, um, uh, and, and people going over to, to uh, uh, betterbachelor.locals.com to support me, which if you wanna do, it's like five bucks a month. I'd appreciate it if you do. Uh, but in the meantime, um, you know, with YouTube cutting, ba cutting back on me a little bit, I may end up taking some other sponsors. But as of now, I still am only, I'm only talking about stuff that, that I actually like. So I'm going to read uh, Aaron Clary's uh, intro to this and kind of what he thinks. And then I'm going to give a kind of a summation at the end. And forgive the noise, I've got a refrigerator that apparently likes to make make whining noises. Uh, anyway, you can get it in audio form. You can get it on Kindle. Um, I actually have the audio, audio form, as I said, and it's in paperback for $15.95. Me personally, I, I think I'd recommend the Kindle or the paperback a little bit more than the audio version on this one. Uh, no dig on Aaron. Um, the, the person that he had or he selected or whatever that decided to read it is a little bit dry and a little bit hard to listen to. Not going to lie. Um, a matter of fact, I'll, I'll probably click the listen button so you can hear on the end. And, th and that's, again, not a dig at Aaron's work at all. It's just the narrator on this one is very monotone and is kind of hard to listen to, which is why it took me a couple times to get through it. But as you guys know, I'm, I'm going to give you the truth of things so you can make the best decision for you. Uh, they, so Aaron goes on to say in the beginning here, um, let me zip it up a little bit so you guys can see it a little bit better here. Uh, he says, uh, for all of human history, men and women came together for, for, to form families. It may, have, it may have been common. It may have been routine, but that's what they did. Generation after generation for all of human history, men and women formed families, that is, until now. Because with advances in technology, incredible economic growth, a generous welfare state, and the political movement of feminism, men and women no longer need each other in order to survive. And as much as we'd like to deny it, when given the chance, men and women are empirically and increasingly choosing to be alone. By 2030, 45% of marriage age women are forecasted to be single, rendering a, sane, a same percent of men equally so. 70% of both men and women are overweight, indicating, serious in, uh, indicating little serious uh, interest in attracting a mate. Marriage ranks fifth place on world's um, women's, pri <laughs> sorry, women's priority list, and one in three marrying age men live with their parents. All of that with crippling college debt, making having a family a luxury most will never afford. Um, you know, one of the things that, that Aaron kind of covers in many of his books, and this is, I would say, the menu's kind of a to-do list. Like if you were going to make a checklist of how can I be happy in life, what, what things should I chase, what things should I uh, ignore, um, maybe I'm going to maybe I'm going to focus on this. Maybe this short-term goal will give me momentary happiness. Maybe this long-term goal is something that I can work towards and give me a direction in life. And by co combining short, medium, long-term goals, you end up having a pretty fulfilled life. And, and what a lot of men go through today, loneliness, is caused by not having 
not having anything to look forward to, not having anything to grow or to strive for or to struggle against or to kind of keep propelling yourself forward. You know, when you go back to the, the I don't know, the Neanderthal times, you were pretty busy all the time. You had to make fire, you had to cook your food, maybe at some point before that it was probably raw. You had to cook your food, you had to hunt, you, know, you had to, to scrounge up food. You know, you had to protect everybody. You you had, and if because if you didn't, you died. That's how it was. So you definitely had some priorities in life. Now today, as long as your income's doing decent, you can watch all the spicy movies you want on the internet. You can have DoorDash delivered right to your door. There, there, a lot of the struggle, like life is easy now. And that's why a lot of people now, I think today, are, are looking for the struggle. So they, in, they, they make problems in their life. They find things to get angry about that, they, that are nothing burgers because they wanna find something to struggle against. And so what Aaron does is he kind of makes a, a really nice list in this book of, hey guys, like here's some ways to kind of find that struggle. But if you succeed and you, you chase that struggle, you'll actually end up winning in the end. It'll improve you uh, in many different ways, whether it's your sanity, your intelligence, your uh, uh, financial uh, income, your health. And, and that's kind of what he's done with his book. And I like this. Um, one, of the, and one of the points he makes here, he's like, you know, women today can make their own money. Women today can uh, be single moms and the, and the government will help them out or child support will help them out. Women don't need men anymore. They don't need them as protectors. They don't need them as income. Women don't need men. And, and so what they're doing is they're choosing men for physical activities and physical fun and for dating them and for using them for resources still, even though they don't need it, they're gonna try to do that. And so what's left for a guy? If, if a guy looks at this and says, hey, you know what? I'm not really into this. This doesn't do anything for me. Well, this is your this is your to do list that that will help you out with that. And then I'm at the end of this, I'm going to talk about a couple of his other books for just a minute too, because again, I think his library is great. He says, uh, but the solution is not to reverse or somehow undo the forces that got us here. Those political, economic, and social sociological forces are simply unstoppable. Marriage is not coming back, certainly not in your lifetime. The solution is to give up hope. The solution is to stoically accept this fate. Because whether you'd like to admit it or not, only one in every two of you are going to get married and only one in eight of you who do will be happy. And thus, the real risk you face is not never getting married or never having a family, but wasting your one and preciously short life pursuing something that is statistically unlikely to happen. Now, as we talk about many times, you may bump into a great woman. You may decide to date her. You may decide to get married to her. You may decide to get to have kids. But again, in one of his other books that, that is one of my favorite books, uh, the book of numbers, um, he tells you the statistics of that happening. Let me tell you guys, it ain't good. It's less than like 1% that you're going to marry a woman that'll stick around and raise kids and not get fat and not be mentally damaged and all the other things. It's not, a, so you don't wanna chase the 1%. You wanna chase the 99%. And then if the 1% happens, great. But if it doesn't, You've, you've filled your life with 99% of other things. He says, unfortunately, this dark reality leaves half the population in an existential lurch without family, marriage, love, or a loving spouse. What do people have uh, to live for in their lives? You are here after all, and you have, uh, you have to do something with your 80 years of consciousness on this planet. Let me just say that's weak sauce. You better go for 100. Plan for 100, man. That, that's Because if that's what you want, I think you can get it nowadays with science. Uh, he says, so unless you're going to uh, kill, unless you're going to end yourself, your existence, your existence forces you to find a purpose and reason to live. You cannot merely exist. And so most people today and in the future are faced with the ar arduous task of finding purpose and meaning in life, the uh, absent, the opposite sex, thus the menu uh, throughout through humanity. Let me try that again. See, now you know why I don't write books because I can barely read, let alone write uh, through you, uh, though humanity has never been to the point where women and men abandon one another before, that doesn't mean that there's not a limitless number of things life offers that gives it value. Whether it's hobbies, vice, philosophy, religion, your career, or your friends, the world offers a limitless menu for you to choose from, a never ending buffet of things you can do, pursue, enjoy, and becoming and to become during your 80 year visit here. And while it may not be what 2 million years of genetics are screaming at you to want, 
it's superior to falling in love and having a family simply because it's possible, at least on the menu, and at least on the menu. And so you face a very simple question. Do you want to spend yet another night at home playing video games, jerking off to spicy movies, and down, uh, downing some Mountain Dew? Do you want to drink another, half, uh, another bottle or two of wine while you watch yet another Hallmark movie? He's talking to the ladies on that one, I'm sure. Or do you want to pull on, uh, put on your big girl panties, cowboy up, acknowledge that there's no one out there for you, and make this life count as much as you possibly can? You know, this is something that, again, I've talked about and, and is one of the themes of all my, my videos. Is you'll notice I'll read some crazy story about some dingbat woman that's doing, and I've got a bunch of them for today. I'm, I'm, I've either uploaded or will be uploading. I got a bunch of them today to talk about. And the, the, the story is the entertainment part. The story is for you guys to listen to it and shake your head and go, my God, what is this world coming to? And at the end of it, I usually tell you, this is why you hit the gym, you have your own passions, you find stoicism, you, you do what's going to make you happy in life and leave this other life behind. That's really what every video I try to do does is to kind of say, here's, here's the crazy. Uh, here's another example of the crazy. Now, now find something that's going to make you happy. That's what Aaron's talking about here is, is, you know what? Hey, find some sanity guys and understand again, you, you know, you may have rainbows and candy fall from the sky in your lap. And, and the odds of that will be certainly better if you're successful and happy and motivated and healthy and things are going great for you. When things, and you guys know how this is, when things are going great for you, it keeps just getting better. Life is great. And sometimes when things are bad, even worse things happen to you and you can kind of really get down in the doldrums. Well, that's kind of what Aaron's talking about here. That look, you've got a finite time here. You can chase after, you know, women, you can chase after uh, the dream of a family and everything else, or you can at least acknowledge, look, times have changed. That's not what you need to chase anymore, even if it might possibly happen to you. But, but you're going to have to find something else to focus on. And this is a, a really great list of things, I think, to, to kind of go through. And it'll help you at least kind of get some direction. Uh, he says, if you're going to die, there's no doubt about, or you're going to die, there's no doubt about that. The question is, if you're going to live, order something from the menu. And I have a little couple of blurbs here just about some of the chapters. It's, it's not a lot, but it's a couple little notes I made. Um, and I, I, I wrote this out again because I, I, I'm, I have, whenever I speak off the top of my head, I have a very bad problem of rambling for too long. Uh, but, I, but I wrote down, it's a to-do list of ways to improve your life, find meaning in it, and have a short to long-term goals to make it fulfilling. And, and I've said this in many of my videos, and I still believe it's true. Take, for example, me. What's my short-term goals for the day? Making sure I go for the gym, go to the gym, take the dog out for at least one or two-mile walk for both of us because we're both probably getting fat and old, and, the th and, and going to the gym and doing my work here on the computer, making sure I get out a couple of videos. That, that's just little, that's like your everyday short-term goals. But you know what, if I don't do videos for a few days and the dog doesn't get longer walks and I'm not going to the gym, nothing's good, nothing good is happening. I'm losing money. I'm not getting content out there. The dog's unhappy and miserable. I'm just sitting here getting fatter and older. So you do those short-term goals. And then you've got to find the medium. What's a medium goal? For me, it's losing another 20 pounds of fat and maybe gaining five pounds of muscle. That's my medium term goal. You know, a couple months out. That's something to step on. Or maybe this weekend, I'm going to go up to the property that I purchased my land and, and I'm going to mark off some more area that I want the land clearers to go up there when they clear land and make sure that I take a can of highlighted fluorescent orange paint and mark some trees around a border and say, clear everything inside this border. You know, so f when they finally pull down the, the last orange tree, they'll look back and, and what I want is cleared. But you know, that's something I got to do this week. That's a medium uh, or, or short to medium one, but it gives me something to do. It's planning. Now I have a reason to go do things. It doesn't sound like a lot, but it's something. And then once my land clearing is done and maybe the house is being constructed, I'm going to go out and buy a small tractor if I can afford it. <laughs> uh, going to look at some used ones and I'll get a small tractor. And then you know what I'm going to do? On the perimeter of my land, I'm going to cut a walking slash jogging path because on 25 acres, that's a pretty good sized lot of land. I'm going to make a, a running path. I don't think I'm going to put gravel in it. I'll just make sure that it's clear from tree roots and rocks. And then I have a place to jog on my property and to walk the dog. And I never have to leave my own land. And he and I can, can have a clear path to walk around. 
again, that's a, that's, these aren't hard things. But when you start adding up, hey, I want to dig a path and I want to pull down these trees and I got to cut, cut up these trees for firewood to get it seasoning for next year or the year after that's uh, wood stove. And I've got to, I've got to wash my Jeep and I've got to get the oil change. And I've got to, I've got, and when you start doing this before you know it, you go, my God, I don't have enough time to do anything. I don't have, I just moved to Knoxville. I don't have any friends here. And you know what? I'm fine with that. Why? Because every day I don't have enough time to accomplish everything I want to. And so I need to prioritize that. And when you do that, what you find is you have so much time and you're enjoying yourself. You fill it with things that you love to do, or at least are interested in doing to maybe make something that's cool, that, that you're going to have, you're, you're just always going to have a full plate. Then you're not lonely. Then you're not feeling like you're missing anything. I, like I actively, actively avoid people now for the most part because I got so many other things I'd rather do than waste my time sitting in a bar trying to hit on some chick or, or you know, ordering a pizza and a beer and sitting there watching the game. You know, I will, I still do give myself uh, time on Sundays or whenever they're playing to watch the Buffalo Bills, but I, I guarantee you something. While I'm watching those, that Buffalo Bills game, I'm also re researching stuff for work online, multitasking. When you do this, guys, you're going to find that loneliness and that emptiness goes away. Uh, I also wrote down here, uh, he also, it also includes a not-to-do list of things to avoid, financial and dating traps that will take you down the wrong path. Kind of the same thing. Like, don't get distracted by these things. And what I like about the way he wrote this is he's saying, hey, maybe all of this isn't for you, but it's going to spark some ideas and maybe get the juices flowing a little bit to get you some motivation to get off your ass and change things to better yourself. You know, I was a network engineer. I did it for several years. I sat my butt in a seat doing the same thing day after day. It felt like Groundhog's Day. And I'll, the only day I look forward to were those paycheck days and some time off so I could do something. I threw it all away to become an idiot on YouTube and to, you know, work on some other projects and to travel around the world. Never been happier. But that may not be right for you. Maybe going up in your education, maybe changing jobs. Again, this kind of gives you a list of, of things to work down. And, and this is uh, the last thing I'll mention on this is he even has a chapter for women with a to-do list and a not to-do list, but the list is actually good for men uh, because it's a list of how lonely and futile women's uh, futures or modern women's uh, future is going to be. It highlights women's lists. Uh, the, it highlights women's list as a, fe a future of happiness. Uh, let me try this. Damn it. I can't even read my own writing today. I haven't had my coffee yet. It highlights women's list or what it highlights in the women's list is a future of emptiness for women because while men can thrive being single, women rarely, if ever do. Men would like, a lot of men would like kids. A lot of men would like a dedicated wife. But if they don't get that, men really are okay with having a good group of friends and hobbies and activities and things they love. Women, on the other hand, are much more social creatures. If they don't have that community of women and it's just them, they become the crazy cat ladies, right? There's a reason why that's a stereotype because it's true. There's a reason why they talk about women getting baby fever when they hit 30s. Because biologically and emotionally, it's something that they want. Men don't get, per se, baby fever. Men don't get um, a lot of guys that maybe you don't have friends or you don't have a big list of people. But you know what? You can jump online with friends and maybe game with them. You can go down to a pool hall. And as a guy, if you just walk into a pool, and I use pool halls. I know it's kind of old-fashioned. But they, they're still around, and it's an example where I've met a lot of friends. You can go out and buy a $30 pool stick. That's really nice. That's a lot better than the bar cues that you find. Get a, a $30 or $40 bag to put it in. Get a couple of things of chalk. And for $50 or $60, you've got a new hobby. And you can walk into a, a pool hall and or even some bars that have three or four tables. And you just say, hey, I'll pay. Would anybody like to play? And as you're shooting the guy, uh, as you're shooting pool with the guy, don't shoot the guy. Uh, you can say, hey, man, so uh, what do you do? Uh, are you regular around here? Oh, yeah, that's a pretty cool bar. I just moved here. And and you might end up talking about sports or, and maybe it doesn't work that one time, but you keep at it. Before you know it, you're going to have a, a group of like-minded guys. You at least have a hangout now. Now you have a place where you know, hey, these guys are going to be here on Friday and Saturday. So Friday becomes a dart league. Friday becomes a pool night. Friday becomes a bowling, whatever, right? You can do this. I used to, every Sunday morning, used to go down for coffee at 9 a.m., 
and like 20 motorcyclists would all ride their bikes unless it was raining. Then we went in our cars and we'd even, so even when we weren't riding motorcycle, we'd sit down and we'd have a, a you know a cup of hot coffee and we'd just talk about motorcycles and dating and women and wives and the kids issues and everything else. This is what Aaron's talking about in this is, is it's a how to do list for a menu and, and how to find those check boxes. So uh, I really would recommend it. I, I really would. I think it's a good one. Uh, it's a, it's a good addition. Uh, the other one I wanted to talk about that's still one of my favorite books. And this is your, if it'll click over here for me. All right, there we go. Um, is the book of numbers. I, I actually, there's actually a better bachelor edition. He had me write a forward for him for, for this book, which I was happy to do. Uh, and Aaron, uh, I, if you if you catch your own review of your book, uh, keep your motorcycle dusted up, man, because I'm going to be coming up your way probably next summer. We're going to go on a, on a good motorcycle ride and uh, uh, and, and I'm going to come up and visit you. Yeah, right here, book of numbers with the better bachelor edition. I wrote a forward for him and he even had to help me with that. He's like, hey, can I fix your Ford a little bit? Because again, he, you know, I wrote it in crayon. Maybe that was part of the problem. Um, but this is one of my favorite books uh, from Aaron is the book of numbers because it breaks down the statistics of, 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 of marriage and sane women and the you know, successful marriages and all that stuff. And, and I'll tell you something, when, after you've read that book, you're going to, you're going to say to yourself, holy, holy ass, man. Like I, I've, I've got less than a 1% chance to actually be happily married with a sane woman and things go well. And I keep the kids and keep the wife and she doesn't nag me and doesn't leave me. So after reading that, you're going to say, okay, I, I do need to find something else to do. What am I going to do? My recommend, my recommendation would read the menu next. Um, I am going to, I just want you to hear this for a second. Um, because again, I'm not, I'm not trying to crap on him, uh, but I want you to hear the audio sample so that that way, if you're not sure if you want to get the audio book or the Kindle edition, which I, I really love Kindle. I have so many I have probably 500 books downloaded. I went from a bookcase that was the length of one of my walls. I went to a, a Kindle. Now it has all my books on it. I want you to hear the audio sample so you know. I personally think it's a little dry. You guys let me know what you think. As I've gotten older, I've lost patience with the question why. The reason why is that it's ultimately moot. It doesn't matter why something happened or how you got into a particular situation. I'm just gonna play that much. As you can see, he's, he, it's a very clear pronunciation, but it's also very dry. And, and again, that's not to crap on Aaron, but I wanna make sure you guys know, you know what you get when you get the audiobook. Cause I usually do audiobooks for most things. This one I just found a little, a little trouble to, or a little hard to read through. Also with something like this, uh, I think I would prefer either the Kindle or the, the paperback version because I like highlighting things. And I actually will usually take, at least when I had physical books, uh, I'll take sticky notes and make a little note on the top of the sticky, you know, uh, but I don't get the full size sticky notes. I get little ones like this. And I'll just make a little note about, you know, finances or whatever, or if I'm reading a great book and there's a quote in there I like, I just write great quote. And then I take the sticky pad and put it on the page. So if you look at a book that I have, it's got a bunch of colored tabs coming out of the top of it. Uh, it probably drive most people crazy, but again, when when it's not a storyline book, but it's an informational book, it's a great way to keep tabs on where you are. It's really hard to do in Kindle, which is one of the downsides, um, and it's very hard to do. Well, it's impossible to do on audiobook. That's why I recommend for a lot of these books to get the soft cover. I actually have the soft cover of the book of numbers, and and I keep little tabs on that for good little stats to to pull out every once in a while. So guys, I, I know this is kind of a, a long video, but I really wanted to give this an in-depth uh, view, and I, I wanted you guys to kind of get a good feeling for it. No, nothing you get by Aaron Clary is going to be like a bad book. Everything is great. You can see like he's got 166 ratings on this, and it's like 4.6 out of five stars. That's how, you know, Aaron's, uh, Aaron's got great books and let me see how the, his book of numbers, that is uh, 4.7 out of five. And the bachelor edition of that same book is 4.6. So apparently people like the version that doesn't have me in it with my, with my forward. Uh, but he's got bachelor pad economics. Uh, he's got enjoy the decline, which is another great book uh, that I really enjoyed which is kind of, again, like, here's what's going to happen, guys. And 
rather than fight it, just, just, you know, just sit back and do what's going to be best for you. So there you go, guys, a uh, quick book review, uh, from, from me by my friend, Aaron Clary. And, uh, uh, uh you know, check it out, give it, give it a listen. Uh, I, I think you'll enjoy it and, uh, and I'll review the next one when it comes out as well. We'll see you in the next one. Thank you.